Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad and the session we would look at the accumulated earning tax and the personal holding company tax. This topic is covered in a corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, is to connect with me on LinkedIn. So if you do, don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you create one. LinkedIn is good for your professional image as well as networking. If you have a Facebook account, you can like my Facebook page. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. In addition to subscribing, if you like my YouTube, please like and share. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. On my website, I always have CPA deals. So if you are a CPA student, please check out my website because I always try to get deals for my viewers so let's take a look at the restriction on corporate accumulation the first thing you want to understand is what is the big idea what is the big idea on restricting corporate accumulation well let me give you a historical overview real quick and show you why this topic is more important than ever today in our tax and our tax environment back in the past the corporate tax rate if we're looking at the corporate uh, looking at the corporation the corporate tax rate the max was 35%. The individual, the individual ranges from zero up to 39.6. This is historically. So notice here, somehow, if you really think about it, if you can shelter, if you can shelter your income in a corporation, you are better off. Why? Because on average, I mean, this is just, you know, macro, macro picture. On average, you would save around 4%. Now, the corporate tax rate is 21%, and the individual highest tax bracket is around 37%. Notice, now individual, they have more incentive than ever to keep their earnings in a corporation. Why? Because they only pay 21% as long as they don't take it out, right? Because if they take it out, they have to pay dividend on it. Although with the dividend, it may be still a good deal, okay? So the point is, there's a restriction on corporate accumulation. Simply put, the government says, we're aware that there's a difference between the corporate income tax and the individual income tax. And let's, let's just tell you what could, in theory, could happen. Not in theory, also in actuality. Let's assume we are dealing with a, you know, an individual that's, uh, that's uh, well off and this individual they makes a lot of money in their corporation they make millions of dollars and what they do every year they pay 21 percent and no dividend they don't pay out any dividend because they don't need the money they have other sources of income and what happened as a result this company this company abc company that this individual owns go up in value because the you know the earnings is accumulated it goes up it goes up it goes up and now it's worth you know hundred million dollars just for the sake of the numbers because we're not taking the dividend out the value of the company is increasing but that's not being taxed because they're only paying 21 percent they're not they're not taking any dividend now eventually this individual will die they will you know eventually they're gonna have to die and what they do is they pass this corporation to their kids okay guess what when their kids gets the corporation they have what's called a step up basis so when the individual gets the corporation, their basis, I just made this number up, their basis in the business is 100 million. So what happened is this, the owner made all that profit, did not pay taxes on, on, on only paid 21% taxes because the owner did not need the money, so kept, they kept the money in the company. The company grew in value, then when the owner passed away, the company was passed to his you know, kids at a step up basis and guess what now the government lost a lot of money why because you're supposed to pay this 100 million you're supposed to pay dividend and if you pay dividend we're going to tax you let's say 20 percent on that dividend and we missed out the government missed out on 20 million dollars so this is the idea so the idea is there's a restriction on how much money you can keep in the corporation without taking it out so what the government does they impose two taxes on you two possible taxes, something called accumulated earning tax and personal holding company tax. So simply put, you can do that. You can do that. So accumulated earning tax and personal holding company tax, let's talk about each one of them separately because they are not 
imposed together at the same time. What is the accumulated earning tax? Yeah, as, as the word suggests, it's somehow you're accumulating too much earnings, therefore we're gonna tax you on this. But I wanna make sure you understand the idea of accumulated earnings. When the company makes a profit, kind of, you know, we have revenues minus expenses gives us net income. Gives us net income. Now from net income, the company might pay some of it in dividend and some of it they might retained an account called retained earnings. So the company made a hundred thousand dollar. They have forty thousand dollar in expenses. Their net income is sixty. They pay ten thousand in dividend and they kept fifty thousand dollar. What we're talking about is at some point, the government might say you have too much in retained earnings, too much that you don't need. Now, the government, the good thing is the government allows you 250,000 in retained earnings. However, anything that you don't need, OK, they will impose above that amount. They will impose 20 percent tax notice on earnings accumulated without a reasonable business need. Now, if you have a reasonable business need and we're going to see what a reasonable business need is, that's OK. You can keep that money because you need it to uh, to expand the business maybe you need it for uh, some type of a lawsuit that's coming up you need it for a product liability you need to pay off some debt so you don't have to pay everything out but you have to have a reasonable business need otherwise we're gonna tax you at 20 percent so you are allowed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so in your retained earnings you can allow two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so let me just walk you through some numbers let's assume the company has a million dollar in the retained earnings of that million dollar, again, they are allowed 250 by the government. They don't have to worry about thing, about anything. Then let's assume they have another 200,000 in business need. And we're going to see what those business needs are. The, gov the, the IRS determined that business need. You have, you know, they will determine it. If they're not convinced, they will p make you pay taxes. So you have a million dollar, 250, basically a freebie. You are allowed to accumulate 250. Then you have 200,000. What's left is 550,000. What the government says, you have to pay 20% tax on that 550,000. And by the way, once you pay taxes on that, then you no longer pay taxes when you take it out later. Bear that in mind. You don't pay taxes on it now. Then when you take it out in dividend, you pay taxes on it again because the government wants their money now. OK, they don't want to wait for you to decide to distribute it. You can distribute it whenever you want to. But for now, we want 20 percent on that access earnings that we think it's an access. You, you really don't need it. OK, so this is the basic idea. So what is considered a reasonable business need? A reasonable business need. A reasonable business need will be if you want to expand your business, replace property, plant, and equipment. You need working capital need for to pay your bills. If you have a product liability losses, you have you are being sued, and you know you might have to come up with some money. Debt retirement if you have to pay off your debt. Self insurance and loan to suppliers and customers. Those are all considered legitimate, reasonable business need for you what is not considered reasonable uh need loan to shareholders well you cannot say i need this money to loan it back to my shareholder that's really that's really bad basically it's it's you're giving the money uh indirectly you can't do that investment in unrelated properties now you could make investments that's related to your to your business okay but if it's not related to your business it's you can't do that okay and unrealistic hazard and contingencies. Now you could have some, you say I would like to have 50,000 or $100,000 in addition to some contingency, but it can, it has to be realistic. Now what's considered realistic, unrealistic? Maybe, maybe a court will decide on that. Okay. But un, if it's considered unrealistic, then it's, it's not considered reasonable business, a reasonable business uh, need. Now bear in mind, you could always reduce this tax by paying out the dividend. So if you pay out the dividend, the government will not will not impose on you accumulated earning tax, of course, because that's what the government wants. The government wants you to pay the dividend, pay it, and we will not tax you. Okay, that's that's the accumulated earning tax. The personal holding company tax also it's a twenty percent tax, but they are not imposed at the same time. So what is considered personal holding company? Because it's very important to know what is a personal holding company. So what's a personal holding company? Personal holding company is when more than 50% of the value of the outstanding stocks is owned by five 
or fewer individual at any time during the last half of the year. So when you have basically a small number of individuals and and a substantial portion, 60% or more of the corporate income is comprised of passive type income, including dividend, interest, rent, royalties, or certain personal service company. So basically what we're looking at here is what you do is you have, you have, um, you have a lot of stocks, a lot of interest, a lot of money at the bank. So what you do, rather than keeping that in your name, you will put that in a corporation and the corporation will pay taxes. Remember, the corporate taxes is now is 21%. And what you do, you let the corporation pay the taxes on it, not you, which is you could be up to 37%. So the government said, no, if you're, if, if, if 60% or more of your income is coming from passive activity, passive income, interest, dividend, rent, royalties, then guess what? In certain personal service income, basically you are providing the service, then you are considered a personal personal holding company. Okay. And what, what could be some examples of personal company, accounting firm, law firm, engineer, architect, actuarial, it's where you are providing the service. And this tax also can be eliminated if you distribute the dividend. All what the IRS wants you to do is don't keep the money in the company because if you keep it, you don't pay it out in dividend. We don't get our share of the tax. So they want, they want to force you to pay it. Now, when it comes to retained earning for personal holding company, you could only retain 150,000. So the, 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 the allowed amount is 150,000. Now, bear in mind, they cannot impose both the accumulated earning tax and the personal holding company tax at the same time. They can't do that. It's either or. Okay. So hopefully that this gave you an idea about the accumulated earning tax and personal holding company tax, which is they both deal with restriction. You cannot have too much retained earnings. Why? Because you're not paying out in dividend. Why? Because the government is not getting their money. Why? The government wants their money. Okay. So if you have any questions, any comments about this session, email me. For additional lectures, please go to my website. If you happen to go to, go to my website, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.